finally live. So welcome everybody. If you don't know who I am, I am Elise um, and I'm the owner and the artist behind the Painter Brushing Co. So today is our Milk Fresco um, live video that I promised last week but I didn't get to. So we're doing it today. Um, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes, see if anybody jumps on. Um, I did announce it a little bit earlier, so I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes while I very quickly add some embossing paste to the top of this. It's got some damage, um, so I thought I'd do it on camera as well so you guys can see it. So I'm just using Essentials Embossing Paste. This is stone. Uh, I'm just using a little bit just on the top of this just to fill it in. Um, so I use um, embossing paste for all like filling holes, etc. Um, because I know it's safe and I'm not going to have an allergic reaction to it. I've had quite a nasty reaction in the past to a filler that I used many times, but they um, must have changed their recipe or something, and then all of a sudden I had a reaction. So now I use this. So for those who are just joining us, I'm just giving it a moment, waiting for anybody to join us. I've decided to just fill the top of this, and it's got some damage on got a crack that it's a bit wobbly so it needs um, gluing and clamping as well but I'm not going to paint the top today I want to get that fixed first but I'm just filling in some quick holes while we wait I do have the camera facing me today so if you have questions feel of the comments rather facing me today so if you do have questions feel free to pop them in there and if I miss them I can answer them afterwards the link uh, to my website for all of your European milk fresco needs is in the post um, so that you can jump on in order. Remem remember, I do have afterpay as well. All right, so that's just, that's the stone embossing paste, which actually has quite a bit of texture to it, but I'll be able to sand that and that will be baby, baby bumps smooth. So that's fine. So I just did that. And then we'll get started. Let me flip this up the right way. So I just wanted to show that anyway. Um, I've had a few questions the last few days about how I feel damaged and fix damage like that. So I wanted to show that anyway. And I figured I may as well do this in one go. This cupboard's really heavy. All right, so let me get that where you can see it. It's tricky trying to get it where you guys can see and then where I can um, paint as well. Alrighty, we might get started. I can see there's a few of you on there. Hi, Lindy and Karen, welcome. Alrighty, so, Les Angels' newest paint offering, or you could see in the background. These legs just here. I will take proper photos um, for the website as well, but my paint display is almost complete of the new colours. There is 12 colours in the range so it is called uh, European Milk Fresco. This is the cute little booklet that Lessential put together um, for our colour chart. So we do have a colour chart for this range. It is hand painted. Um, so we've got 12 really beautiful colours. Um, very, very classic colours as well. We do have a brighter red and a brighter blue in there as well, as well as fern which is a brighter green. Um, but they are in there. Yes, you can use them by themselves, but they are great colours to mix with and make your own colours. Um, and that's why Lessential chose to put a really bright red in there because they are really great for mixing your own. Heaps of information about the product. And then on the back as well, there's recommendations um, for products that go really, really well uh, with the milk, European Milk Fresco as well. So um, soapstone wax glazes, the eggshell top coat, etc. So you've always got an option. Just some suggestions. So every single order will get one of these um, in your first order. If you somehow lose it, etc. and you place another order down the line, just leave a note on the order or send me an email and I'm happy to pop an extra one in for you. Okay, so we're going to jump straight into painting. I'm going to show you a couple of little things that I've already done. So this one here is super, super cute. I'm um, waiting for my drill battery to charge again so that I can hang it up and take some quick photos. But this one here is painted in, now I can't remember the color. I think it's called Stoneware, where'd I put it? 
I'm still learning the names, though these names are pretty much easier to learn than the uh, ultimate finish names. Yes, so stoneware. So this is a really earthy grey. That's that top corner one. So stoneware, and then it's been sealed with soapstone wax. Um, I'll pop up the photos of before and after wax, and I'll do this piece when I wax it. I will um, probably do a video as well to show before and after wax and show how the colour does change. Now, uh, European Milk Fresco, it's meant to be mottled. It's meant to be vintage. It's not meant to be perfect coverage um, or, like, the perfect clean finish look. It's meant to look really vintage and really old. So, um, this, it will not chip because it has a bonding agent in it. This one has been um, painted with sweet cream on the inside, so it's quite... Oh, it's looking very yellow in that... Like, but that's sweet cream on the inside. Um, this one I distressed. So because it won't chip like other milk paints on the market, um, distressing is the best way to get that really rustic look. So I actually distressed this with a wet cloth, with just like a damp cloth. Um, no sandpaper at all. It was really, really easy to distress. I will be distressing this a little bit, so I'll show that as well. Um, but it, yeah, it has a bonding agent in it, so it won't just chip, um, and it's not unpredictable. It's very, very easy to use. Um, it feels like milk paint. It smells like milk paint. The works. So give it a go, um, before you say, no, it's not a milk paint, because it definitely is. It does not have an acrylic base, and that's what makes it different to other liquid milk paints on the market. Uh, Lessential have created a real milk paint that's uh, very different to what's on the market. So these are the pots. They come in 500 mil and then 50 mil little sample pots. These ones are $42 and the little samples are $14. Um, so today I am using Old Navy, which I know, I think it looks, yeah, it does. It looks quite purple on the camera, but it is a really nice navy. And I'm using a little bit of Seascape as well. I finally did a sign for Oliver's room with his with his um, first initial, with his O. Um, and I did Old Navy and Seascape, and I got this really, really pretty blue. So I want a little bit of that mixed in, and I want to see a little bit of the, oops, wrong one, of the Seascape as well. So I'm doing a little bit of blending with this as well. So for prep, all I have done is I've given it a really good, clean, hot, soapy water. If at the very least for your prep work you clean, um, I would be very proud of you. So cleaning is really important. You don't want to leave old oils, um, cleaning products, etc. You don't want to leave them on your surface because they they are going to affect your paint to some extent. And that stands for whether you, whether you use the Botanics chalk paint or the Ultimate Finish mineral paint as well. So always, always clean. Um, and then after that, I did do a little bit of sanding. There was a little bit of chipping finish. Um, but overall, it was pretty good. You don't want to leave an unstable um, finish on your piece before you paint because it's just going to cause your paint to come off as well. So that's really important. Um, and then the top before, if you're just joining us, I did just show um, the top has a little bit of damage. So I've just uh, filled that in with some embossing paste and I'm going to paint the top later on once that's dry and fixed up and it needs a bit of clamping as well. All right, so you will have to, excuse me, I am still a little bit sick. My throat isn't great. So I will have to stop every now and then, stop talking anyway. So hardware, uh, there's a little handle up here on the drawer that I can't remove. It is screwed in from the back and then it's got nails in the front as well. And um, they're quite flimsy sort of little tin tin handles and I didn't want to risk damaging it so I have uh, just taped it up and then it doesn't matter if I still get paint on it it's very easy to clean off that this handle I have taken off it was just screwed in thankfully so uh, that one came off super easy apart from that uh, that's all the prep required I have cleaned inside and out as always make sure you take out your drawers clean underneath etc as well so we shall get painting I'm using two brushes today I'm using the Lessential Short Handle F38. This is my favorite brush right now. I'm loving the short handle. It fits really, really comfortably in my hand. And then I have the F50 as well. I was hoping to use my Oval 50, 
um, but it I didn't clean it properly and it was still a bit dirty so I'm using this one instead and that one's got a long handle so if you were interested in the brushes they're short and long handles um, the long handles have slightly um, ooh, where are we shorter bristles or they're about the same but there's a very very slight difference of a few mil but this brush I'm living for right now so as always give your paint a really good shake uh, you don't have to be too um, heavy-handed with your shaking but it's always a good idea these jars all have plastic lids and I know we're all very excited by that and then they have I haven't checked all the jars, but as as long as um, they haven't missed any, they have an extra little plastic cap as well, which helps prevent your lid from getting so dirty as well. And um, it makes it a little bit easier to ship, etc. as well, because it's uh, less likely to leak. So I always just wipe off the excess. It does look very purple in this light, um, but it is definitely a blue. So I'm going to use this brush first. My first coat is just about getting the paint on. My second coat's when I'm really going to start blending, but I want to see what my coverage is like over a dark timber first. So, loading up your brush like normal. So you can see the paint. It's a really nice, creamy consistency, which I love. Um, I'm living for this paint. I tried it at our retailer training. I painted like a little tiny piece of timber. Straight away, I had to have it. Um, and La Central finally announced to retailers that they were bringing it out and I was one of the first to put my hands up because um, it's just amazing. So I'm going to paint with my drawer and uh, cupboard door because I actually shut it and I can't open it. And this is taped up so I can't get that out. Yeah, no, I can't open that now. So I'm going to paint with it all in and shut, um, but I'll clean them up afterwards. It's not a big deal. So a little bit of paint on your brush. You don't need loads, um, but this, remember, the coverage isn't meant to be perfect. Um, and that was something that took me a few goes to sort of work out when I was painting my samples. It, it did take me a few goes to work out. But um, the coverage isn't meant to be perfect. So I want this to be quite textured. So I'm not too fussed about which ways I paint in. This can be very smooth. Um, painting in one direction following like the normal technique to get a nice smooth finish um, is very easy to do so you just paint it on just like normal paint there's nothing there's nothing special in regards to painting it it's very straightforward and easy to paint with so because my drawer is in I'm just making sure I'm not getting too much paint along those crevices and pushing it in and then causing issues later with trying to open the drawers or the door. So these are all available on my website ready to go. I have all the colours in stock in both sizes as well. So if you want a little bit more texture, which I will show you, we're going to let it start to dry and then I'm going to paint back over it and that's going to pull out more texture, um, which is what we want as well for this. If you don't want more texture, just leave it as you would normally. Once it starts to dry, you don't keep touching. And this looks really messy, but it's rare that I get to do really messy painting um, and I'm really loving it. I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to getting a really clean finish. Brush strokes don't bother me. I love brush strokes. That tells me that it's been painted by hand and with a little bit of love. But I do love a little bit of messy painting too. So you can see it's pretty standard for first coat. It's not that perfect coverage and it won't be even with a couple more coats. Um, I'll do two coats on this. The other colours, the darker colours over a darker finish, you're going to get that uh, little bit neater coverage. But like a white over this, it's going to take you quite a few coats to get perfect coverage. Um, and I think that sort of just ruins the whole look of this paint. You don't want the perfect coverage um, always. And I think that's the beauty of this paint is that it can be a little bit different. So um, European Milk Fresco is great for furniture, home decor. Um, L'Essential rec highly recommend it. I haven't tried it yet, but hopefully I will be painting a wall 
in here somewhere. I need to pick a wall um, with it as well. So it's great for walls, for like feature walls and that sort of thing. Oh no, my phone thinks it's going to go flat. I'm hoping I'll get this painted. If it dies, I apologize. So legs are always fun to paint, but that's why I don't do chairs, because I don't like legs, but these ones aren't horrendous. They've got this bit of carved detail though. So ask questions guys, because I can see comments. If you've got any questions at all, of course, this is uh, eco-friendly certified, it's VOC free, it's vegan as well, um, which is a really great added bonus to this paint. So essential ethics are just through the roof amazing. Um, it's one of the reasons why I chose to begin stocking them in the first place. Never mind the fact that I love the products, I love their ethics. The fact that they do go out of their way to make sure um, that all the products are certified are fully certified, etc. as well. I think is such a nice thing to see a company doing. So, and they're, they are just a, an amazing customer, uh, amazing company to work with as well. Headquarters are fantastic. If you ever have any questions and I can't answer it or you just wanna go direct to the source, contact them because they will give you so much valuable information about the products. Um, which is just really, really fantastic to see. Okay, so I can't see all the sides, so I'll fix that up. That's why we do two coats. Doesn't matter if the first coat's a bit rough. So if you have questions, guys, pop them there. I'm happy to answer questions. On another side, there we go. I'm not too fussed. I do need to clamp the top, but I'm not too fussed if I get some on the edge now. Um, I, wa I thought about keeping it timber, but I think the look that I'm going for overall, I think I will prefer this. I have some really pretty um, paper with, I think they've got like whales and fishes. And um, what else do they have on them? I think they've got octopus as well. It's just a really cute vintage look nautical paper. And I think I'm going to pop that in the drawer and I think it will suit the uh, colours that I've chosen really well as well. So, um, it's just, yeah, I want this to look really old. Uh, it's, it would be vintage, I don't think it would be an antique. But, This paint does have quite a large open time, I'm finding. It is quite cool here today. I'm in the studio, um, so it's always a little bit cooler in here. And I did turn off the heater as I started, so it has cooled down already in here. But the open time is fantastic on this paint. Normally, if I was trying to get this really smooth and really like spot on perfect, I would be taking my time. I wouldn't be doing lots of this stuff. It'd be long, even strokes like that. It's very, very easy to get a really nice, almost flawless finish with this paint. Um, it's got a really nice texture and it's very, very easy, but I do want some texture, so. You can cross hatch, you can put it on a little bit thicker, wait a few minutes. You can blast it with a hairdryer if you want to. It's really up to you um, how you get your extra texture, but it's very, very easy to achieve. Oh, it's really heavy to achieve heat and texture. Just clean off under there. start putting a little bit of the seascape in I just want a little bit and you can blend it on the piece and sort of mix it mix the colors together while it's on there 
or you can mix them together separately and then paint with them. It's really up to you. This range only has 12 colours um, because that's all it needs. Um, it is the perfect range for mixing. All of Lessential's paints mix really, really well. Um, but 12 colours, I don't want a million colours because I don't have room for them, but 12 colours is perfect. I think it's a really, it's a really perfect amount for this range. And they tell me this is all the colours that there will be, so I'll be holding on to that as well because I am completely out of room at this point. I have one wall left and I need a wall for staging. Um, so if I come out with more products, I won't have a staging wall anymore, which might be an issue. I might have to um, build a bigger shed or find a better space. So some of this I'm putting on quite thickly, other bits are not as thick. All right, and that leg's almost done. I'll add some more to that. So I'll be waxing this, sealing it, with soapstone wax. Soapstone was originally designed for European milk fresco. Um, but it got launched before the European Melt Fresco last year. And I, I fell in love with it straight away. I've nearly used a whole jar already. Um, I use it more than any of the other waxes at this point in time because I really, really love it. Um, and it's perfect for this paint. left it sort of slowed down down so I will be able to show you I don't want to start it and then not be able to show you the uh, bit of blending if my phone goes flat and I don't have a charger down here I just realized I missed a leg I always miss something I try to paint fairly methodically to make sure that I don't miss places but I always miss somewhere you can see how well can you see yes you can sort of see can you see how some of it's starting to go a little bit dull and some of it still looks super wet so that's starting to dry um which is perfect that's what i was waiting for i was waiting for it to start to dry so i'm gonna wipe off that brush put the lid back on it i always try to keep the lids on the jars when i'm not using them i don't like to leave them open so now I'm using Seascape, which is this, it is really bright and it stays quite bright. All of the other colours become quite muted, but I find the Seascape does remain fairly bright when it's dry. Okay, I'm actually just going to grab. Check that out. I'm just going to pop some paint in a little jar just because I'm sort of mixing the two colors on the piece I don't want to contaminate my paint in the jar so let me just always try to clean the edges of your jars I'm the worst at it I can't preach about it because I'm not very good at cleaning my jars at all but always try to clean jars particularly the botanics bottles always clean your botanics bottles because they are really hard to open the jars I find are a little bit easier to open but they are bottles are not so fun when they start to dry. All right, so all I'm gonna do, I've got a very small amount on my brush, and I'm just going to sort of work it into the navy a little bit. It is starting to dry, and that's fine, that's what I'm after. I just want little streaks of that 
purple. You could wait for this to dry and do it afterwards, but I'm gonna do the two coats and I'm gonna do this again. Um, so it's sort of going to be layered and blended. When I distress a little bit, you're gonna see peaks of it. Um, so it's just another way to do it. You can wait, you don't have to do it straight away. So I've still got some paint on this other brush, so I'm just using it to clean it up a little bit. I'm just going to pop out the camera, come this side just so I can get to what I'm trying to do a little bit better. And because it's starting to dry, this is where I'm getting my texture in there. And I love texture. You can use a spray bottle to add some moisture back to it, but um, I don't think I've got one. And um, I actually quite like this little bit of texture that I'm getting this way. So I don't want loads of really, really bright pops of blue. But when I do my second coat, that's when I'll blend in a little bit more. See how it's just, it's just a little bit and it's just enough to highlight it and give it a little bit more definition. Most sort of wait to do this. Um, until their first coat is dry and then they go back and do this as part of their second coat. But I am doing it uh, now instead. So, not here. really really subtle I probably took poured out not too much paint here actually sorry <coughs> <coughs> this cold was not a good one I thought I missed it too but oh they still managed to give it to me There we go. Is that a little bit better? Can you see that better now? You can't see me now, but that's okay. You don't need to see me. So again, this is just starting to dry. If you don't like it, just paint back over it. It will um, come off very easily as well. Until you seal it, um, the paint will come off quite easily. Unless you're painting something that's super, super porous like raw timber, it will come off very easily. Um, a wet cloth on um, something like this that had a varnish on it, a wet cloth is all you would need. So that's European milk fresco. That's how easy it is to use. Um, I will probably do the second coat. I'll just do it. Um, but I will come back. I'll try and do a live. It won't be until later this week. I won't get back in here until then. But um, I will try and do a live when I seal it as well to show you how easy it is to seal and um, how much the wax sort of changes it as you seal as well. Hang on, I can't turn it now. I don't want to put my hand in the wet paint. There we go. If you've got any questions, guys, pop them there in the comments. I'm happy to answer questions. I know there's only a few of you still hanging around, but please ask questions if you've got them. I want you guys to love this product as much as what I do. Um, what else do I want? Yep. 
there. I'm loving this bit up the legs. I think it's just really defining them a little bit actually. So this first coat is the first coat, so it's not going to be perfect. My second coat is when this will come together. I might even add a little bit of white in it actually on the second coat, but I'll see how I go. I won't need I sort of just I'll let the paint dry and I'll let it tell me what it sort of what it sort of wants. But I'm really liking that little pop of blue. Just a few pops of blue. All right, so that's it for me. I am done. European milk fresco. Oh, just in time, my friend's about to die on me. European milk fresco from La Sanctuary. It is available on my website right now. I have one pot of one fifty gram pot of soapstone wax left to give away with the next order that includes at least one 500 ml jar, which, oh, the lid wasn't on that. <laughs> one 500 ml jar of European milk fresco. So if you're the lucky duck to order, you'll be seeing a freebie in your order. But for now, that's it for me. Uh, I'm gonna let this dry. I won't get back to this until the end of when will I get back? The end of the week. And I will try, I'll announce before I do a live, if I do, to show you guys the um, the waxing. But I'll try and um, at least film a little bit of the second coat as well. But that's it. Have a great Sunday afternoon. Have a great week. Make sure you get your freebie if your order's the next one through. Bye, guys. Have a great afternoon.